This is not the first time that Roborock released a new model and gave it an older name. Back in June of 2019, Roborock released the S6, which was to date their most expensive robot vacuum brought to market. And three months later, they released the S5 Max, with an upgraded and larger electronically controlled water tank, which was big news back then. I remember thinking to myself, why is this not called the S6 Max instead? Fast forward to today, and we have a similar question. My name is Jamie Andrews, and this is the newest from Roborock, the S7 Max Ultra, which was just released after the entire S8 series. I plan to tell you what sets it apart from the similar yet much older S7 Max V Ultra, and then put it in a direct head-to-head -head match with the Curevo, which comes in at a cheaper price tag and has nearly all the same features and specs. The S7 Max Ultra is available with a retail price of $1,400 and can be purchased in either white or black. Since I have fully reviewed the S7 Max V and the Ultra Dock in prior videos, I'll leave a link to those in the description below and just highlight the few changes that have been made starting with the robot itself. The first big change to the S7 Max is with the object avoidance system, which lacks the RGB camera and a second structured light sensor found on the older S7 Max V. The video calling feature with audio is obviously gone as well. The results of these downgrades on the S7 Max can be seen here in this side-by-side -side comparison, where I put both robots through my obstacle avoidance course designed to detect the things I feel most people care about. The S7 Max V, while not perfect, greatly outperforms the S7 Max in this test. Flipping the robot over, we see less cliff sensors on the S7 Max, which are missing the two rear ones. Up front, we see Roborock's new style bristle side-spinning brush. The brush roller is the same between the two, except the way the ends detach, making it much easier to remove hair on the newer version. The S7 Max has the same exact vibrating and lifting mopping system referred to as Viberize, which made its first debut on the S7 released several years ago, although now totally gone is the ability to remove the entire mopping plate. The main onboard water tank is the exact same 200 milliliters in size, and while the one on the older S7 Max V is removable, the new one is fully integrated. Roborock also decided to drop that cool multifunction LED light on the lid for the S7 Max. On a positive note, the vacuum motor is rated at 5500 pascals, an increase of 400 pascals over the older S7 Max V. Love it or hate the design, the Ultra Dock looks just like the older dock that I reviewed last year, but it's been upgraded to include a built-in dryer for the mop and the dock drain a newly revised dock drain filter, and an improved self-cleaning system. While technically you can't add a dryer to the older Ultra Dock, it will cost you an extra $100 and only dries the mop and not the dock drain. Those are the main changes between the S7 Max Ultra and the older S7 Max V Ultra. If you want a premium S-Series all-in-one robot from Roborock, but don't want a camera, or you could care less about object avoidance, the S7 Max starts to make some sense, as long as it's cheaper. Let me know if you're interested in a direct head-to-head -head test between these two robots in the future. Now for the comparison to the Q Revo, which I've been so excited to produce. We're not only comparing two closely specced robots, we're comparing Roborock's first take at a spinning mopping pad system versus the proven Viberize mopping plate system. Then there's the Ultra Dock versus the more simple, yet slender, Revo Dock. The S7 Max actually has a bunch in common with the Q Revo. It has the same basic reactive tech object avoidance system, same rated vacuum motor, same upgraded main roller and side spinning brush. The big difference is with the mopping system, where the Q Revo uses two spinning pads, and the S7 Max uses a vibrating mopping pad. The Q Revo features one water outlet per pad to keep them wet while mopping, whereas the S7 Max only has a single one in the center. 
The total pad width is two inches wider with the S7 Max, so it will get closer to your baseboards. The S7 Max contains a larger 200 milliliter onboard water tank, whereas the Curevo only has a smallish 80 milliliter tank. Other differences are up top the Curevo is missing a dedicated spot cleaning button found on the S7 Max. The Curevo stands about 22 inches tall, whereas the UltraDock is closer to 17 inches. The UltraDock makes up for this in width being 3 inches wider than the Curevo, and both are nearly the same depth. Finally, the brush roller housing on the S7 Max is free-floating, while it's only semi-free-floating on the Curevo. Their docks are full-featured and both have the same functionality, except for the UltraDock boasts a self-cleaning option. I'll have more of my thoughts on that later. Let's go ahead and see how these stack up against one another by starting off with the most important test, which is the mopping test, where I use baked on hot sauce on my tile floor and send the robots out for two passes in deep plus mopping mode with room temperature water and no detergent. The Viberize system has always been the one to beat in my previous mopping test and the Curevo almost tied it if it hadn't been for that little bit left on the floor after a single pass. But both of these are very impressive mops, easily acing my mopping test, where many of the competitors don't even clear it all after two full passes. With the vacuum test on tile floor, I spread 130 grams of cat litter on my tile floor and sent them both out to pick up as much as possible in max plus vacuum mode. I expected similar results based on having the same rated vacuum motor, and in fact their scores were real close with the S7 Max picking up one extra gram, likely due to that fully floating roller brush design. Both are excellent top tier scores for this test. Moving on to the carpet test, where I scatter 54 grams of rice on my medium pile carpet and send both vacuums out in max plus vacuum mode to pick up as much as possible. Again, I expected similar results, and indeed, that is what I got, with them both picking up 52 grams of rice, or 96%, which again is top tier performance. Seeing as they share the same exact object avoidance system, I again expected similar results with this standard object avoidance test, and as you can see here in this side by side, they both performed nearly identical. The reactive tech system is not great at detecting objects, and when it does, it gets really too close. Roborock claims the Curevo can lift the mopping pads 7mm, which is higher than the 5mm on the S7 Max, but what I found is in reality, they are nearly identical since the mopping pad on the Curevo sticks down enough to make up for most of that difference. I tested this by having them go from my hard floor to my rug with both water levels set at high and found that only the edges of the rug were wet and the main part of the rug was only slightly damp. So in my opinion, they're both fairly effective for low to medium pile carpet. Mopping on hard floor surfaces, I wanted to compare these two by measuring their water consumption. The UltraDock has much smaller water tanks when compared to the Curevo, which should be a downgrade, right? To figure this out, I used 2,000 milliliters of clean water in their clean water tanks and sent both robots out to each mop three rooms totaling 160 square feet. All settings were the same in the app, including the water level, and these are the results. The S7 Max used a total of 550 milliliters of clean water and recaptured 500 milliliters in the dirty water tank, which in turn assumes the robot itself used 50 milliliters of water during the mopping job. The Curevo used 910 milliliters of water and captured 775 milliliters in the dirty water tank, which in turn assumes the robot used 135 milliliters of water during the mopping job. It's obvious the Curevo uses more water for pad cleaning and mopping, which explains the need for the larger water tanks. To further break this down, both used roughly 18% of their total clean water tank capacity during this test. 
So there's really no advantage for the larger water tanks found on the Curevo. In fact, using more water also means using more detergent, so keep that in mind. Let's continue comparing these two docks, starting with some other specs like sound and power readings. This is a breakdown of their noise level while both washing their mops and performing an auto empty. And here is a quick comparison of the power draw when performing an auto empty and while drying the mopping pads. And as you can see, the Qrevo uses a bit less power overall. Both pass my auto empty test with the S7 Max clearing a full dustbin of dirt and hair in just one session, just as the Qrevo did in my last video review. The UltraDock dried the mopping pads in two hours flat, tying the Qrevo. However, you should know the dock sink in the Qrevo was completely dry after two hours while the S7 Max still had water in the dock drain filter and base after four hours of drying. Now would be a good time to talk about that self-cleaning feature on the Ultra Dock, and in my opinion, it is fairly misleading to call it self-cleaning, as it only cleans part of the dock. On the Ultra Dock, you have to remove this filter and clean it separately, plus you have to clean under this since the water drains through this filter into the dock base. Don't forget to pull and clean that little roller brush either as it will get dirty. So much for that self-cleaning, right? On the Qrevo, all you have to do is pull out this tray, run it under some water, and just push it back in with nothing to clean in the dock at all. In conclusion, I found that I actually prefer the dock design of the less complex Qrevo with the only ultra dock advantage being that it uses less water and thus less cleaning solution. I also like the charging contacts on the Qrevo, which are on the back, and it means that it does not need to back off the dock and flip around like the S7 Max does when switching between washing the pads and charging. The removable dock sink is one of the best parts of the Qrevo and much easier to clean. If you want a bunch of water output while mopping, the Qrevo can certainly put out some serious water, and it still has a fully removable mopping plate system, which I am a big fan of. Where I give the S7 Max Ultra props is with the tight water control while washing and mopping. Also a wider mopping pad that will get closer to the baseboards and a larger integrated water tank for those people with really large homes. It also builds on a proven design that we know just simply works and works well, and it includes all the latest upgrades to the Ultra Dock. In the end, these two are top tier cleaning robot vacuums that share a lot in common, and the choice between them might come down to your budget. The Qrevo being below that important $1,000 mark while delivering most all options of the more expensive S7 Max Ultra make it sort of a no-brainer to me. The Qrevo is here to disrupt the entire robot vacuum market, just as the S5 Max did way back in 2019. Drop a comment below if you want to see any more head-to-head -head tests like these. It takes many hours to test, analyze, and create this very video you are watching right here, and if you found it helpful in any way, I ask that you take a moment to subscribe to help support my efforts here. I want to thank each of you for watching this video and hope that you will take time to watch even more of them. Take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.